Good afternoon, everyone. We'd like to welcome you and thank you for joining our webinar to learn more about city and county posting requirements. A quick note before we get started. Please feel free to submit a question at any time during the presentation using the chat feature on your screen. We will respond immediately to any technical concerns, and any other questions you have about the information being presented will be answered as soon as possible after the presentation. And without further ado, here's Ashley Kaplan, our in-house senior employment law attorney. Ashley has been practicing labor and employment law for more than 18 years. Here at Gene Neal, Ashley handles our legal compliance and also oversees the teams responsible for researching all the posting laws and developing poster guard services to meet our customers' diverse needs. Ashley has agreed to personally follow up with a response to any posting compliance questions you submit during the presentation, and as a special offer to our attendees today, she will also be available to provide a complimentary consultation about your specific posting compliance needs. If you are interested, please indicate that in the question box, and we will contact you to set it up. And here's our presenter, Ashley Kaplan. Thank you, and welcome, everyone. The goal of today's webinar is to share some important information about labor law posting compliance and a new trend we're seeing with city and county posting requirements. Labor law posting compliance can be complicated enough on a federal and state level with up to 20 required postings in a given state, coupled with the fact that there is a constant rate of change, which can mean managing about 150 changes a year nationwide, and in some states up to six mandatory state law changes per year. So if you have locations in certain cities or counties, there are additional employee postings to worry about, and that can be up to seven additional postings in a given location. And of course, the city and local postings also change frequently, so there's a lot to keep up with. So today we're going to cover these additional city and county posting requirements, including recent changes and some pending changes we're watching now. Um, and we're also going to go over some general posting compliance issues that matter on a city level as well as state and federal, such as posting in foreign languages and how to comply with posting requirements for your remote workers or off-site employees. And we're also going to highlight upcoming federal and state changes expected in the coming months. Um, we're also going to go over a solution by Poster Guard that will help you manage all of these postings, including the latest city and county requirements, and that will help you stay on the right side of the law when it comes to labor law posting compliance. So first, let's start with a basic understanding of the federal and state requirements, and then we'll get into the specifics about city and county posting laws. Today's posting compliance environment is more complex than ever. As most of you probably know, all businesses in the U.S. have to post both federal and state employee notices. And depending on what state you're in, this can add up to 20 individual postings that have to be displayed on your wall. This includes six mandatory posters on a federal level and then up to 14 additional posters for state law compliance. The six mandatory federal posters are, first there's the EEOC posting, this is the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission posting, and it covers anti-discrimination provisions um, and affirmative action requirements for contractors. Uh, then there's the FLSA posting, the Fair Labor Standards Act, and this notifies employees about the minimum wage rate, overtime rules, and also child labor laws. Then there's the OSHA posting, and this highlights important provisions of the Occupational Safety and Health Act. Then there's the EPPA posting. This is the Employee Polygraph Protection Act, and it lets employees know the rules around lie detector tests in employment. And, um, of course, this is mandatory even if you don't use lie detector tests at all in your business. We get that question a lot, but it is mandatory for everyone. Then there's the uh, Family and Medical Leave Act posting. And this posting gives employees basic information about their eligibility for leave, what benefits they can expect, and also your responsibilities as the employer regarding FMLA leave procedures and benefits. Then there's the USERA posting, which stands for the Uniform Services Employment and Reemployment Rights Act. And this notice covers reemployment after military leave, anti-discrimination provisions, and issues around um, health insurance and benefits during and after military leave. 
Then on a state level, there are additional mandatory postings that are required for every business. And again, depending on what state you're in, this can add up to 14 additional posters. Uh, this area of compliance, the state law postings, um, it is becoming a more and more complex and difficult to manage over the years because more and more laws are being passed on a state level giving employees protection and employment. And with each new law, there's a potential poster update or a new poster being issued. Um, the state posters cover topics such as state minimum wage rates, fair employment, unemployment insurance, workers' compensation, rules around smoking in the workplace, paid sick leave, child labor, and some new areas we're seeing um, like human trafficking. We've seen a few states issue posters around human trafficking, expanded family care rights, um, different reasons where, why employees have job protected leave and, and time off. And also um, we've seen uh, a new trend around electronic cigarettes um, being banned in the workplace and posters are also being issued to communicate the ban uh, against electronic cigarettes. On top of this, if you operate in certain cities or counties, like I said, you could have up to seven additional postings to display at each location. And then there are other specialty postings that might apply. For example, if you have government contracts or if you're in certain highly regulated industries like healthcare or food service. So one thing that a lot of people aren't so familiar with is that there is not a one-stop shop for free government posters. So while the various agencies do provide the posters, there's not a central place where you can get all the posters you need. So it takes quite a bit of know-how and resources to get everything you need just for basic compliance, just for the federal and state postings that we've been talking about. It's one thing if you just have one location to worry about, but for multi-state employers, there's actually, across the nation, there are more than 370 different posters that are required on a combined federal and state level and these posters are issued by about 175 different agencies. So in any given state, just managing posting compliance in one state alone, an employer would have to go up to nine different agencies to get the required federal and state posters. Um, and for the most part, these agencies work independently. They don't have work share agreements where they provide all the posters that the sister agencies require. In some cases, they do try to help, and you can get some crossover where one agency will have posters that are governed or enforced by another agency. There are some agencies in you know, certain states that do a pretty good job of this, but it's not a complete list, and there's not a one-stop shop where you can get all the federal and all the state posters you need for full compliance. Please keep in mind as we're going through all of this information that there's no need to get overwhelmed because we're also going to tell you about a solution to help you manage all of this. And it's a solution developed by GNEAL specifically for large companies with locations in multiple states and cities to address all the extra complexities that you face when it comes to posting compliance. But first let's take a look at another layer adding to the complexity of posting compliance and that is keeping up with the rapid rate of change. Um, when the government issues new or updated posters and the old ones have to be changed out immediately to maintain ongoing compliance. Labor law posting requirements change frequently and we've actually seen the rate of change increase to an all-time high over the past few years. Our legal team here at GNEAL monitors and tracks all of the poster changes on a daily basis and on average we see about 150 state posting changes a year. Every time there's a posting change, our legal team reviews the underlying laws to determine if it's mandatory or non-mandatory, and at least half of the changes do require a mandatory update or immediate replacement of the posters. Another problem adding to the complexity of posting compliance is that the government agencies don't notify businesses when these posting changes occur. So this can be difficult because the posting requirements and the notice of changes can be buried on different agency website pages. And a lot of times the old posters remain on active website links even though they're non-compliant. So you can go to the link where you're used to downloading your poster and it, could, it will still be there and it will be active and there won't be any information about the posting um, 
having changed or that there's a new um, version that you're required to use. Um, also, um, the posting guidelines can be buried in statutes and regulations or even in case law. It's not always obvious from the websites uh, whether there are foreign language requirements, size, font, color requirements, um, who has to post the poster, and whether it's mandatory or non-mandatory. So this makes it difficult to find posting changes, difficult to interpret whether the updates are mandatory or non-mandatory, and difficult to determine whether there are compliance deadlines for replacing old posters with the new ones. This is just a visual of the rate of federal and state posting changes um, for each state. This is something we update at the end of every calendar year, and it shows how many poster changes employers have had to manage for each, for each state during this time period. So you can see the states that are in red, um, these are the states with the most extreme level of change, and they experienced between 9 and 20 posting changes during this time, during this time period. Um, and this, um, we're just talking about mandatory change, changes here. These are the changes that require poster replacements. The states that are highlighted in orange had a high level of change, and they experienced between 6 um, and 8 poster changes during this period. The ones in yellow had three to five mandatory changes, and then there are a few states in blue, and those only had one to two poster changes. I also want to talk um, just really quickly about the risks of noncompliance and why it's important to make sure you have all the current postings and your posting display sites are complete and up-to-date. In the statutes for the regular federal postings, the government is authorized to fine up to $17,000 per location for posting violations. And that could be for missing posters or outdated posters. On a state and city level, the fines are typically between $100 and $1,000 per violation, but um, each posting has its own fines attached to it, so they're really all over the place. On average, I would say they're uh, typically around three to $500 per violation. But um, the real danger with posting violations is related to employee lawsuits and employee disputes, and this is true on a federal, state, and city or local level. There are a few different ways that posting compliance comes into play with employee lawsuits. The first, and probably the biggest, is when it comes to the statute of limitations. The statute of limitations can be an employer's best friend because it's the defense that allows you to have a claim stricken or dismissed because it was filed too late. The statute of limitations, for example, for a federal discrimination claim is 300 days. Uh, for a Fair Labor Standards Act overtime case, it's two years. So you know, each law has a different statute of limitations. So typically, if you get a claim from a former employee or an existing employee for a violation that occurred outside of that time period, you can move to have that claim dismissed and avoid all the legal fees and potential liability for the claims in the lawsuit. However, if you have a posting violation, if you have a missing or an outdated poster, courts have begun to publish more and more decisions saying that if an employee didn't have notice of their rights because the poster wasn't up, that the statute of limitations is extended or told and you can't use it as a defense. So we've seen cases where normally an old claim could have been dismissed where the court allowed the plaintiff to pursue the claim and it ended up in a six-figure judgment just because the posters were not up on the wall. Another way that posting compliance comes into play um, in lawsuits is as evidence of bad faith. And all of the different federal and state employment laws have different standards where the concept of good faith or bad faith affects the employer's potential liability. Like under Title VII for discrimination claims, you can be assessed punitive damages. Under the FMLA, the Family and Medical Leave Act, and the Fair Labor Standards Act, you can be assessed double damages, or what are called liquidated damages. And we've seen a lot of cases lately, um, and again, there are a variety of different legal standards that have to do with good faith or bad faith, but we've seen a lot of cases lately where the courts are looking at different factors to determine if a company acted in bad faith or good faith. And posting compliance is starting to come in as a common factor. Um, typically, we've always seen um, other factors like training, um, policies, what efforts did the employer take to prevent or remedy the situation. And now we're starting to see posting compliance come in as a factor as well. Now we're going to cover specific city and county posting requirements. 
Um, this is a new trend we've been watching, and the number of cities and counties requiring employers to post labor law notices is really growing quickly as cities are passing more and more ordinances giving employees certain rights and protections beyond what is already provided by federal or state law. Our legal team is monitoring and tracking these, and this list is quickly growing. Almost daily, we're analyzing new legislation and ordinances that are coming out and determining whether they require mandatory postings and adding them to our offering. Um, we've actually just added another lawyer to our legal team just to focus on these city requirements because of the growth we're seeing in this area. In terms of both the number of cities requiring posters and the number of mandatory changes we're tracking for these posters. Now we're going to review some specific city posting requirements, um, focusing on the ones that are the most recently enacted and the ones affecting the largest areas. Um, obviously, we won't have time to cover every city and county requirement, but if you'd like information about a specific city or all the local postings that we offer, please go ahead and indicate that as a question, or you can just send us an email, and we'll follow up with you to go over the specifics that apply to your business. The um, city and county postings cover a variety of employment laws, similar to the state posters. Uh, cities have the discretion to pass laws that are more generous to employees than under state or federal law. So, for example, a lot of cities have their own higher minimum wage. Um, they might also have their own paid medical leave rules, um, time off or job protected time off for, for certain reasons that aren't recognized under state law. Um, they might also have different discrimination provisions with different protected characteristics. For example, some cities recognize sexual orientation as a protected characteristic, even though uh, federal law doesn't, or in some states it's not recognized. Um, so there can really be a lot of different laws that have to be followed and are reflected in these posters. Um, one question I get a lot is whether you have to post the city posters in addition to the state and federal posters um, if the information on the posters conflict. For example, if your city has a minimum wage poster and the minimum wage rate is higher than the state minimum wage rate, um, you still, the question is, do you still have to post the state and the federal? And the short answer is yes. Um, the reason is because sometimes the laws cover different employees. They might have different legal definitions of who's covered. And the legal differences can be subtle, but you do have to post all three versions even if they seem to conflict. I know that that's um, confusing and that's a hassle, but um, that is the requirement. So we're going to start with San Francisco posting requirements. There are actually seven postings required for employers operating in San Francisco. And um, of course, like I said, these posters have to be displayed in addition to the federal posters and all of the California state posters. So this means in San Francisco, you would have, um, I think there are 19 state and federal postings for California employers, plus these additional seven, so 26 postings um, at each of your posting display sites. The first mandatory posting for San Francisco is the paid sick leave poster. Um, this posting informs employees about their rights when it comes to absences for illness. And um, the posting has to be uh, displayed by all San Francisco employers, and it has to be posted in English, Spanish, and Chinese. And this posting is issued and enforced by the city's Office of Labor Standards Enforcement, the OLSE. Next is the San Francisco minimum wage poster. This one also has to be posted by all San Francisco employers, and it has to be posted in English, Spanish, and Chinese. And this posting informs employees of the current minimum wage rate, um, which, by the way, this poster changes frequently and requires mandatory replacements or updates because the city, the city typically implements minimum wage increases on an annual basis uh, with the new posters um, coming out before the beginning of each calendar year. And this one is also enforced by the OLSE. The third mandatory posting for San Francisco is the Health Care Security Ordinance poster. Um, this one has to be posted by San Francisco employers with 20 or more employees, and it also has to be posted in English, Spanish, and Chinese. Um, these language requirements that, um, for the posters we've gone over so far apply even if the employer has all English-speaking employees. Uh, they still have to be posted in um, Spanish and Chinese um, in addition to English. 
And this posting informs employees of the required minimum health care expenditure rates. And um, similar to the minimum wage poster, the information on this one also changes as the health care expenditures, the health care expenditure rates increase, typically it's done on an annual basis at the beginning of the calendar year. Um, and this one is also issued by the OLSE. The next mandatory posting for San Francisco is the Family Friendly Workplace Ordinance Poster. And this one has to be posted by San Francisco employers with 20 or more employees. And it also has to be displayed in English, Spanish, and Chinese. Uh, next is a fairly new poster, and um, this is the Fair Chance Ordinance Poster. This posting requirement went into effect on August 13, 2014. It has to be posted in English, Spanish, and Chinese. It has to be posted by um, all San Francisco employers with 20 or more employees. And the posting provides information about the rules employers have to follow when it comes to applicants and employees' prior arrests, conviction records, and related criminal background information. This is actually a trend we're seeing in a lot of cities as well as on a state level where the legislature is protecting individuals from being excluded from employment and other opportunities based on their criminal background records. The next mandatory employee notice is a no smoking posting. Um, the laws are really strict about smoking in San Francisco and so are the posting requirements. Um, this poster called the no smoking at building entrance poster has to be posted by all San Francisco employers and the law specifies exactly what the sign must say, how big the lettering must be, how the smoking emblem must look, and where it must be displayed. Um, in this case, the poster has to be within 10 feet from the building entrance and between 5 and 8 feet from the ground. Um, the height of the um, is actually dictated by law. And um, this posting is issued and enforced by the San Francisco Department of Public Health. Um, San Francisco employers are also required to post another no smoking sign. This is a general one that uh, has to be posted inside the premises. And the posting has to be displayed by all San Francisco employers. And it also has strict size and font and content requirements. Um, and it's also enforced by the San Francisco Department of Public Health. So San Francisco has the most postings of any single city. Um, there are other cities in California with mandatory employee postings, including San Jose. Um, in San Jose, all employers have to post the San Jose minimum wage poster. Um, it has to be posted in English, and the law here says that you have to post it in other languages if spoken by 5% or more of the workforce. And uh, like the San Francisco minimum wage poster, this one changes frequently as the rate increases, typically at the beginning of each calendar year as well. And um, this poster is issued and enforced by the city of San Jose's Office of Equality Assurance. Now we're going to shift gears a little bit and uh, move to the East Coast. There are a few postings required for employers operating in Philadelphia. Um, there are actually four mandatory postings on a city level for Philadelphia employers. Um, the first is the domestic violence poster. Um, this posting is required for all Philadelphia businesses, regardless of their size, and it provides information to employees about the Philadelphia law that gives victims of domestic violence certain rights in employment, like job-protected time off. Um, this posting is issued and enforced by the Philadelphia Commission on Human Relations. Next, there is the Philadelphia Employment Discrimination Poster. And this one informs employees of the city's anti-discrimination laws. And it has to be posted by all Philadelphia employers. And it's also enforced by the Philadelphia Commission on Human Relations. The third mandatory poster for Philadelphia is the Philadelphia Pregnancy Accommodation Poster. This one is required for all employers in Philadelphia, and it's also issued by the Philadelphia Commission on Human Relations. Um, then finally, we have the Philadelphia version of the no smoking poster. This one is also required for all employers in Philadelphia, and it's enforced by the Philadelphia Department of Public Health. Um, it's interesting with these Philadelphia posters that the law does not require you to automatically post them in Spanish. On a state level, employers in Pennsylvania do have to post all of their state labor law postings 
in both English and Spanish if they have any Spanish-speaking employees. It's one of the only states with that requirement where all the posters have to be posted in both languages. Um, I'm going to touch on foreign language posting requirements in a moment. They're different on a federal, state, and local level, and it can get really confusing, so we're going to cover that briefly. Um, next, we're going to go over uh, Florida, some uh, local posting requirements in Florida. Um, in Florida, there's a mandatory posting for all employers in Broward County. And this covers a really large area of about 30 cities, including Fort Lauderdale, Sunrise, Pembroke Pines, and Pompano, just to name a few. Um, the poster is the Broward County Wage Recovery Poster, and it informs employees of their right to file a complaint against the business for unpaid wages, including underpayment or non-payment of wages. Um, the poster is issued and enforced by Broward County's Office of Intergovernmental Affairs and Professional Standards. There's another large area in Florida with a mandatory posting requirement, and that's Miami-Dade. The Miami-Dade County Living Wage Ordinance has to be posted by certain Miami-Dade service contractors, and it informs employees of the living wage rates. Um, this is one that also changes frequently, typically every fall, there's an updated version that has to be posted, and the, uh, the old poster has to be taken down and replaced. And this one's enforced by the Miami-Dade Internal Services Department. Um, next, in New Jersey, there are a couple of cities with mandatory posting requirements. First, there's Jersey City, where all employers have to post the Jersey City Earned Sick Time Ordinance poster. Um, this poster informs employees of their right to take paid time off for illness. And it has to be posted in English and any other language if spoken by at least 10% of the workforce. Um, this one's enforced by the Jersey City Department of Health and Human Services, and the law states that a posting violation can result in fines of up to $100 per employee and $500 per establishment. Um, with a lot of these um, ordinances, the posting fines um, are not specified. Um, it, it, they uh, are silent as to, they just give the city discretion to fine, but in this case, they've actually put the, um, the guidelines and the cap on what the posting fines would be. Um, next, in Newark, New Jersey, all employers have to post the Newark Paid Sick Leave poster, which is similar to the Jersey City poster. Um, this one in Newark just became a requirement in June 2014. And a lot of businesses aren't even aware of it or, and are um, still out of compliance. This one has to be posted in English and any language if spoken by at least 10% of the workforce. Um, this one also has a penalty for failure to post at $500, and it's enforced by the City of Newark's Department of Child and Family Wellbeing. In New Mexico, there are two cities with posting requirements. Um, in Santa Fe, all employers have to post the Santa Fe Living Wage Ordinance poster, and it has to be posted in both English and Spanish. Um, this is another poster that gets updates at least once a year when the rates increase, and it's issued by the City of Santa Fe's Office of Constituent Services. And then in Albuquerque, all employers have to post the Albuquerque Minimum Wage poster, and it also has to be posted in both English and Spanish. Um, it, it's regardless of the demographics and whether there are Spanish-speaking employees um, at, at each location, the poster has to be um, bilingual. And um, this poster is also expected to get an update as soon as the new wage rate increase is announced. Um, now we're going to cover New York City. Um, we get so many questions about this one because the law is kind of confusing. First, there's the New York City paid sick leave poster. Beginning on May 1st, 2014, employers in New York City were required to hand deliver a written notice to every employee about this new law giving employees paid sick leave rights. The law says that the handout is mandatory, but most employers choose to also communicate the policy as a poster to ensure compliance. So while it's not mandatory to do both, the law says that posting the information demonstrates good faith compliance with the law. There's another new poster for uh, New York City employers, and it's the New York Pregnancy Employment Rights poster. Um, this is also based on a new law on pregnancy discrimination and accommodations in the workplace, and employers were required to hand out written materials to all their employees about the law 
as of January 2014. So like the paid sick leave poster, the law encourages posting in addition to the handouts, and the posting is considered evidence of good faith compliance. Um, this one is enforced by the New York City Commission on Human Rights. Um, next for New York City, there's a mandatory poster for certain city contractors, and that's the New York City Whistleblower Protection Poster. The, the poster informs employees of their rights not to be retaliated against for reporting corruption or fraud relating to a city contract. And it's enforced by the New York City Department of Investigation. Um, by the way, as a side note, um, we've gone over a few posters that are for employers that contract with the government. There are actually lots of additional um, posters that businesses have to display if they are government contractors. On a federal level, for example, there are up to nine additional posters. Um, if you receive government funding or have federal government contracts that you have to display um, at your locations. Um, there are similar postings required on a state level, and as we've discussed, there are also contractor posters um, on a city and local level. I just want to mention, though, it's not the subject of today's webinar that uh, Poster Guard does offer full service solutions for government contractors, for um, federal contractors, to cover these additional posting requirements. So um, let us know, either you can send it in as a question or just shoot us an email if you'd like more information on the posters that are required um, for federal contractors or any of the solutions that we offer to cover um, government contractor compliance. Um, now we're going to shift back uh, to the West Coast and talk about a posting requirement in Portland, Oregon. This one applies to all employers in Portland, and the poster informs employees about Portland's law providing for job-protected sick time. Um, this poster has to be posted in English and also in Spanish if you have Spanish-speaking employees. And this poster is issued by the City of Portland Commissioner. Um, then in Seattle, there's um, also a law providing employees with paid sick time. And the law says that employers must provide each employee with information about the law, which can be done in a handout, but most employers choose to comply by posting the information in the form of a poster. Um, this poster is issued and enforced by the Seattle Office of Civil Rights. Uh, like I said, we only have time to highlight a few of the city and local posting requirements. Uh, there's so much local legislation out there affecting these posting obligations, and even some laws that have already passed that will mean more poster changes in the coming months, where the laws have um, changed but the posters haven't been issued yet. Um, this slide just shows a list of some posting changes that have already been announced on a city and local level that will be coming out soon. Um, these are actually laws that have been passed already. Of course, there are many, many others in various stages of legislation that we're watching as well, but um, the, the ones listed here have already have effective dates and corresponding posters. So they're, what, they're on what we call our poster change hot list. Um, and before the end of the presentation, we're going to put up a slide with the federal and state changes um, on the hot list with the um, laws that have already been passed and uh, where corresponding poster changes um, are imminent. So um, this will show you what you can expect in the, in the um, coming months. Because of the complexity involved in keeping up with all of the posters, the rate of change, and the severity of the penalties for noncompliance, we've developed a solution to help our customers stay on the right side of the law when it comes to posting compliance. For years, Poster Guard has provided complete coverage for federal and state labor law compliance. And now we have new solutions specifically covering city and local posting requirements. Um, before I get into the details of Poster Guard's solution for city and county compliance, I realize that some of you attending today's webinar may not be familiar with Poster Guard or our basic federal and state coverage, so I wanted to back up and give you a, a brief overview of how it works. Um, Poster Guard is a comprehensive labor law posting solution by Genial, and Genial is the industry leader in posting compliance for more than 25 years. And when we talk about our standard Poster Guard compliance protection service, we're referring to the postings that every business must display on their walls to comply with federal and state posting requirements. These are the mandatory posters we went over at the beginning of the presentation, um, up to 20 postings per state. 
The way the Postal Guard Service works is we start you out by sending all the mandatory federal and state labor law postings to each of your locations. Um, the postings are combined and printed in a condensed laminated format. And this is to save wall space, but also to ensure durability and protect the posters from being ripped or torn or covered up to ensure compliance. Um, then once you get your initial postings, we take care of everything from there. Our in-house legal team monitors the posters daily for changes. And whenever there's a mandatory update, we automatically send you the new posters at no additional charge. And that is you know, no matter how many changes there are throughout the year. We also um, provide a customized members-only web portal where Poster Guard members can easily track all of the changes and poster replacement activities for their specific locations. So you can see at a glance all of your active locations, which ones have poster changes. Um, you can even track shipments to see exactly where the poster is in transit, when it arrived, and who signed for it. Poster Guard also provides a 100% guarantee against government posting fines. This means that if you're a Poster Guard customer and you receive a government posting fine when you've properly displayed the most recent version of our posters, um, then we take full responsibility for the fine. Something else worth mentioning, um, to help further protect you against damages and lawsuits, we also provide complete record keeping where we maintain up to five years of records and we provide our customers with all the evidence and data that they need to respond to requests in litigation or a government investigation, um, you know, to help you prove that you were in compliance when it comes to all the posting laws applicable to your business. We can show what posters you had at, what, at um, each location. So when it comes to the city and local posting requirements, we realize it can be really complicated um, going through all the local laws wherever you have employees, trying to determine if there are mandatory postings for those laws, and then keeping track of all the mandatory changes and poster updates to stay in compliance. We listened to our customers on this issue, and we've expanded our Poster Guard services to make this as easy as possible. Poster Guard for city and county compliance works just like the basic Poster Guard service. Uh, based on your specific locations and whether there are city or county posting requirements there, you can purchase the full Poster Guard coverage, which is the most comprehensive service. It covers all of your federal, state, and city or county um, compliance needs. Or if you already have Poster Guard, you can just select the cities or counties you want to add, and we can supplement your posting sites with the additional postings they need um, for city or county compliance. Just like the regular Poster Guard service, we start by sending you all the posters you need for immediate compliance, and then we constantly monitor the laws for changes and send new posters automatically at no additional charge whenever there's a mandatory change. Um, all of the posters are monitored and reviewed by our in-house legal team, and we adhere strictly to size, font, and color requirements. Um, this is true for all our posters and something we take very seriously on the compliance team. Our legal team analyzes each posting requirement to check for size, font, and color requirements, and we adhere to them strictly to comply with the posting laws. We do shrink the posters as much as we can to save on wall space. We are you know, aware of, of that, um, but not if it compromises compliance. Um, we also automatically include all of the posters in whatever mandatory languages are required. And this is done at no extra charge to make sure you're in compliance. So whenever a poster is required in multiple languages for all employers, um, you know, like the posters we went over that must be posted in um, English, Spanish, and Chinese in San Francisco, for example, um, any of the posting requirements that apply um, to all employers, even if you have all English-speaking employees, Post Regard automatically includes those with your English service. And this is true for all our posters um, on a state level as well. Um, if a state law requires every employer to post something in a foreign language, we include the translated versions automatically in the English service at no additional charge. And this is because we want to make sure you're in compliance. And if it's mandatory for everyone, you shouldn't have to ask for it or um, you know, be forced to buy something extra to be covered. And finally, like all of our Poster Guard services, the city and county services are also covered by our 100% compliance guarantee against government posting fines. Just a side note, 
I mentioned um, that I'd come back to the foreign language posting requirements. Um, the postings that we've been talking about are the ones required in foreign languages no matter what, even if you have no employees who speak foreign languages at work. Um, and those are the ones that are automatically covered by Postal Guard's English service. In addition to all the city and county foreign language postings that we uh, just went over, there are actually 20 states, 20, I'm sorry, 22 states right now that require businesses to post certain postings in other languages, typically in Spanish, where you're required to post them in both English and Spanish regardless of your workforce demographics, even if you don't have any Spanish-speaking employees on your staff. In these 22 states, there are actually 46 individual postings that have to be posted in Spanish. Um, and a few states go even further and have requirements for other languages. We've seen up to 11 different languages, um, Russian, Japanese, Arabic, Mandarin, Creole. Um, oh, and just a side note, in Puerto Rico, all of the postings have to be displayed in Spanish. This is the list of the 22 states that currently require certain postings to be displayed in Spanish. Um, like I said, even if you don't have any Spanish-speaking employees. The good news is if you're a Poster Guard member, like I said, these postings are already included in your English service. So if you're in any of these states, there's really nothing to worry about when it comes to these postings if you have the Poster Guard regular English service. Um, these postings already appear on your English panels in both languages. Um, now, if you do have Spanish-speaking employees, there are some additional requirements you need to know about. So things change a little bit when it comes to your locations with a significant number of Spanish-speaking employees. First of all, when it comes to the federal poster, the federal combination poster has six unique postings on it. Um, if you have a significant number of Spanish-speaking employees who are not proficient in English, you need to post the federal combination poster in both English and Spanish. Unfortunately, the law doesn't clarify what a significant number means. Um, but looking at similar laws as a point of reference, some say it's 10% of the workforce and others go by 20%. Um, since the law doesn't clearly define the number, um, companies typically just work within their own legal department to establish standards based on a variety of risk factors. You know, it really depends on your business. Um, but to be on the safe side, most employers choose to post the federal combination poster in Spanish if it affects 10% or more of the workforce at a given location. And again, that's not written in stone anywhere, but it's just a best practice recommendation. Um, on a state level, there isn't a requirement that's written into law that says you have to post um, every poster in both English and Spanish, even if you employ a lot of Spanish-speaking employees who don't speak English. However, most employers who have to post the bilingual federal poster because they do have Spanish-speaking employees choose to go ahead and post all of the postings um, as bilingual in both languages just because it's a best practice. It would just be difficult to explain in any kind of dispute why there was a choice made that certain posters were posted in Spanish, but we didn't take the extra step to post all of the mandatory notices in the language that um, we know our employees would understand. So while it's not required and it's not in black and white in the law, it is recommended as a best practice if you're required to communicate the federal notices in Spanish to also communicate the state notices in Spanish as well. And, um, and now remember there is that one exception that I mentioned earlier and that's in Pennsylvania. Um, in Pennsylvania, employers who employ Spanish-speaking employees do have to post all of the state um, posters in Spanish. Unfortunately, the agency doesn't provide a really clear definition of who this applies to. It simply says um, it applies to all employers with Spanish-speaking employees in Pennsylvania. So um, it's not the same standard I just went over um, where it has to be a significant number um, and where the employees have to um, not be proficient in English. So to be safe, if you have Spanish-speaking employees in Pennsylvania, you should be posting all of the state posters in both English and Spanish. So one of the things about Poster Guard is that it allows you the flexibility to decide for each of your locations. Um, you can decide which ones need bilingual postings for federal, which ones need full bilingual for, for federal and state, um, and which ones are, are fine just being covered by the English service. And this designation can be different from location to location. 
Um, now I just want to touch on another related compliance issue that we get a lot of questions on, and that is how to comply with posting requirements, um, including these city and county requirements, when it comes to your remote workers. Um, PostReGuard offers all of our posting compliance solutions in multiple formats to meet the unique needs of today's workplace, and that includes electronic solutions for your off-site employees who have regular access to the Internet and email, um, and also a binder solution for your non-traditional work sites without walls. And um, we're just going to touch on these really briefly. Um, first, when it comes to electronic posting solutions, this is something we watch closely. Our legal team has been in contact with the government agencies for years, and we're constantly reading the statutory language and the posting re regulations as they come out. Unfortunately, the government agencies, when it comes to posting compliance, haven't really caught up with the modern technology of today's workforce. So the general rule is still that electronic delivery is not a substitute for full-size physical posters. The posters still have to be posted in conspicuous locations, accessible to all employees, in a physical format, posted on your walls. Um, there are a couple of exceptions. As new regulations come out under federal law, the government agencies are addressing this. So um, we've seen this with the most recent FMLA regulations and also when the USERA notice became a requirement, where the government said it's okay to communicate these posters electronically, but only if you communicate all your other employee policies electronically. And you have to make sure that your employees and applicants have electronic access and are receiving them electronically. So that can be difficult to stay on top of for a lot of businesses, and it depends if you provide your employees with electronic access. Um, you also have to know whether um, they either have a computer or a mobile device or some way of accessing the posters if you're going to rely on them. Now, when it comes to your off-site employees who work from home or out in the field and they don't have access to your physical posting display sites or bulletin boards, there are some exceptions. Um, first, let's talk about remote workers and telecommuters. For years um, here at Geneal, the legal team has gotten questions from our customers saying they have employees who work from home and they wanted to know what they're supposed to do in terms of the posters. Should they be sending their home-based employees full-size laminated posters? We got that question um, over and over again. Um, and we've all kind of laughed trying to imagine someone working from home, putting up the full-size posters in their kitchen or on their bathroom walls. And um, obviously that wouldn't work and that's not required. Um, but it is kind of confusing because by law, you are required to provide the mandatory federal and state notices to all your employees. However, the regulations don't tell us exactly how that's supposed to be done when it comes to home-based employees. They do tell you that you're required to communicate the information, but they don't tell you that you have to use a certain solution or format and whether it has to be paper or electronic. But um, there are some recent opinion letters and court cases that we've found where employers have sent notices electronically to their home-based workers, and the courts have said this is a good alternative, and that makes sense. You've got the notices to them, and that's what counts. So to help our customers comply, we've developed PostReGuard e-service for remote workers. And this is really, like I said, it's not a substitute for wall postings if you have a facility where people report to work. But for off-site employees um, who have Internet access and who, you know, have computers or mobile devices where they regularly access email for work, this is a fully compliant solution. This is the way the PostReGuard e-service for remote workers um, works. You provide us with the email address and the zip codes for your remote workers, and then we pretty much take it from there to communicate everything and keep you in compliance. Once we have the email address, we send a welcome email to the off-site employee, and the email has simple instructions requiring the employee to download, view the posters, and then to acknowledge the date and time the posters were viewed. Um, and this happens right when the employee is signed up, so it happens upon enrollment, and then whenever there's a mandatory change, we automatically send another email with the same instructions telling the employee the posters have changed, you're required to click here, view the posters, and acknowledge that you've done so. Um, and if the employee works in an area with mandatory city or county postings, we can include those images as well. 
In fact, you can add any of the Poster Guard expanded solutions to give your remote workers access to the exact same postings that are on your walls, whether it's additional posters in Spanish, um, posters for employees of federal contractors, um, postings for Canadian locations, or um, any of the industry-specific postings that we offer. They can be all be added to the electronic solution for full compliance. Um, this is really great because it provides full tracking of all the dates and times when your employees acknowledge the posters. Um, it actually shows up on the PosterGuard.com members-only website with your other shipping and delivery information. So just as you can see when a package arrives at your location, you can also see an employee's name and the date and time when um, the employee acknowledged the electronic posters. Um, this is really useful. I can tell you from experience as an employment attorney, um, and it's usually with employee handbook policies, but whenever there's a dispute, whether it's unemployment compensation or a lawsuit, employees will always say, you know, I didn't know about that rule or, you know, I didn't get that policy, I didn't know it was updated. Um, and, this, and in this case, you have the proof and tracking for backup showing that the employee did, in fact, view and acknowledge all of the postings as required. Um, next, we're going to talk about non-traditional work sites. And this is something that's really popped up more and more in recent years. Um, and there are a lot of workstations and work sites today that don't have walls or any way to hang up the required postings. Um, some good, a good example are the mall kiosks, the little kiosks that you see in the middle of the mall. They don't necessarily have Internet access. They don't provide the employees with Internet access or any kind of mobile device um, to access postings electronically, but they also don't have walls. Um, so in this case, you're still required to comply with posting requirements, and we've developed a solution to help you do that. Um, it's, um, it's actually a binder solution, and it includes all of the uh, mandatory um, federal and state posters um, and any city or county posters that are required for that area. Um, they um, all fit into a compact binder that's 11 by 17, and um, the reason it's this size is to make sure that it complies with all the minimum size requirements under federal, state, and, and local law. And it works just like the regular Poster Guard service. New locations are sent the complete binder to get started, and then whenever there's a mandatory change, we automatically send the, the sheet that needs replacing, and it's a three-ring binder, so you can easily remove the old and insert the new. Um, this is something I mentioned uh, that works well for mall kiosks, but we're also starting to see it with things like valet stations um, and mobile service units, especially in healthcare, where there are a growing number of mobile services like MRI units, kidney dialysis, or blood donation trailers. Um, there are just a, a lot of services on wheels um, that we, we've seen this industry grow. Um, we've also seen it with businesses who perform services on another company's property, like janitorial services, where, for example, there's just sort of a checkpoint where employees go to get their supplies, maybe a closet or a storage area but there are no walls. Um, and um, just like the electronic service with the binders, you can add city or county postings, federal contractor postings, um, you know, wh whatever uh, additional Spanish, um, wh whatever you need to make sure that you've covered all your requirements for the employees in those areas. So we're going to wrap up the presentation with an overview of some of the mandatory federal and state poster changes we're monitoring right now um, based on laws that have already passed. Uh, we've already covered city and county posting changes on the horizon, but this slide highlight, highlights pending changes on a federal and state level. And these are poster changes based on laws that have already been enacted laws that make the corresponding posters outdated and will require mandatory poster updates with the new information. Typically, a law is passed and the government updates the poster before the compliance deadline or the effective date of the law, but that is not always the case. Sometimes a law will go into effect and the government takes its time. It could take weeks or even months to catch up and get the new information onto the posters. So sometimes an effective date, um, you know, you could have a, an effective date of a new law, but the new poster doesn't come out until weeks after that. Now, this is just a list of laws that have actually been passed with actual effective dates. There's a host of other bills that are pending in various stages of legislation that could also affect the posters. On a federal level, 
The posters may be affected by pending bills on issues like immigration reform and FMLA expansions. Um, and as we've discussed, there are hundreds of bills that are pending on a state and local level. But again, this slide just captures posters that are due to have mandatory updates based on laws that have already been enacted. Um, if you have any questions about the specific changes you see here and how they will impact your business, please submit your question using the chat feature or just send us an email and we'll get back to you with more information. Well, that wraps it up. Um, I hope you found this presentation to be helpful and informative. I know we went over a lot of legal requirements and details, but there's a lot to share when it comes to these laws and your specific obligation when it comes to city and county compliance. If you have any questions or would like additional information about Post Regard or any of the compliance issues I've talked about today, please feel free to contact our National Sales Director, Mike Davis, on his direct line at 954-514-2218. You can also contact Mike by email at mdavis at postregard.com. You may also contact Manny Barrios, our compliance specialist, at 954-514-2274 or by email at mbarrios at postregard.com. Thanks again for attending today's presentation and we hope you have a wonderful afternoon.